This episode of Nuff Said is brought to you by Tweaked Audio. To get awesome headphones, go to tweakedaudio.com and use the coupon code SOUTHGATE to get 30% off, free shipping, and a lifetime warranty. Or you can get there through the link on our website, southgatemediagroup.com. Happy New Year! <laughs> and welcome once again to Super Connectivity. Yay! I'm your host, Charlie, the Professor Esser, and with me, as always, is the Blue-Eyed Bomber from the Berg of Pits. Phil, fill me in perch. It's confetti, yay! Hey, Philip, welcome once again to Super Connectivity. Oh my goodness, such a fun, fun new year, 2021. We are recording this. The day of, the first day of the new year, Philip. I'm willing, wearing my fancy new shirt, uh, a gift from the lovely little Hellfire, who is a good friend of this show and many others. Um, and I am ready to talk all of the wonders of 2020 going into 2021. Um, first thing I want to talk about, because I don't think we've really talked about it much on any show, is the release of Soul. Yeah. Now, you and Luca have watched Soul. Yes, yes, the whole family watched Soul, yes. Yes, and, um, you know, one of the things, and I had seen articles on this as well, but this idea of uh, the parallels between the new Wonder Woman, which some people erroneously think is not a good film. Um, I'm not going to say it's a great film. It's not as good as Superman 3, but whatever is. Uh, but it's a much better film than, than, than the hype, uh, gives you. But it's, it's like Back to the Future. You gotta watch it more than once to get all of the things that the artist was saying. Mm. You know, which I, which granted, you know, you can't always guarantee that rewatch, but you would hope when you have a character like Wonder Woman, yeah, you're gonna get that rewatch. You're gonna get at least two watches out of it because, you know, there might be something you missed. Yeah, we're doing the that's big, important. We're doing the big review tomorrow. Maybe t- today, after we're done with this, maybe I'll do what you did. You because you watched both Wonder Woman and then the sequel, right? Actually, I did not do a rewatch of the Wonder oh. Woman first one. I was going to mostly just because I wanted to double check that um, Steve Trevor's brother was alive and well in uh, that universe. But I don't see any, and there actually isn't. There is evidence of it in. The film, and what I'm here's here's what I will say. I was complaining about there not being a big montage, and I made the joke that you know Patty Jenkins took show don't tell too far and forgot to show or tell. But I realized she actually did show. She did show a lot, but you have to be you have to put your Matt Pat hat on to sort of go. Oh, that's why that's this, and that's why that's that. The fact that the photo of her and Etta is in color is an important aspect of, oh, so that actually took place in the 60s when color film was widely available. And so that that reframes the, the situation. Uh, there's a photo of a wedding. Um, I don't know if Etta is the bride in that. I don't know. But you can see that basically there was a whole life lived. And, you know... I think what gets people, what people have problems with, with Wonder Woman, and like I said, we'll talk about this more tomorrow, but I think one of the problems they have is that they're, they are thinking about Wonder Woman as a temporal human life. And the thing that you can't think about Wonder Woman as is a temporal human life. Her experience is very much outside of that as an immortal, as a person who has literally been alive for thousands of years. Much like 22, over in Seoul. Um, 22, who we are led to imagine is the 22nd soul ever created. Um, which tells you how long she's been up there. You know? You know, and they got like, oh, yes. Because <laughs> uh, one of the, the soul they introduced right before her is soul uh, 110,573,000 yeah. or something like that. <laughs> you know? Because there's been a lot of souls. Um, some go to the great beyond, some come back. Uh, and one of the, uh, parallels between soul and wonder woman is the idea of a soul occupying another body. 
and what that means in the dynamics. Now, with Soul, there have been criticisms of it as well. Um, most specifically that, you know, a middle-aged white woman, Tina Fey, uh, takes, takes over the body of, uh, our protagonist, Joe. And so at various times, you'll see Joe's face. Uh, sorry, so spoilers for Soul if you haven't seen it yet. Um, but we're talking about Soul, and you should know this is always a spoiler uh, podcast. Uh, yeah. But there is this idea that, you know, oh, it's taking away his agency. I don't know how true that is per se, since um, we never really uh, – whereas, yes – Arguably, you can say that every time you have a black protagonist in a Disney film, they have to go through a transformation. Um, not like there's a large panoply of uh, voices to choose from, because it's basically Princess of the Frog and Princess and the Frog and now now Soul. But I think, if nothing else, what you have in this is a really solid um, African American cast. Uh, Telling African American stories, you just have um, Tina Fey coming into it as sort of the blank slate. And again, Tina Fey just happened to do the voice. Twenty two even said, you know, twenty two had never been born yet. Twenty two says, you know, I'm not man. You know, it wasn't male or female. Like she, I use she, but you know, she said I could sound like you know sound like a man. She even sounded like uh, yeah, yeah. And and again, too, I took it as like a kind of a twist on like you know. A, like it's a wonderful life. It's like, oh, you think your life's horrible? Well, look what all everything you have, you know, all the potential and yeah, and and well, you know, the whole thing is, and of course, I also love the the big twist reveal, which is that the spark isn't your purpose, mm-hmm. but you also get the realization that oh, all of the mentors think that all the mentors <laughs> don't understand that you're not trying to teach this kid to have a purpose. You're just getting them to want to live a life. Well, because all the mentors were like experts in their field, weren't they? So it's like, you know, their spark led to like greatness. So it's like, Oh yeah, of course the spark is, you know, your whole sense of being and stuff. Well, but that's the thing is the suggestion is that actually, no, the spark isn't that, that, well, yeah, um, yeah, that's what I'm saying. But, Joe, that's, but that's what Joe the mentors to, think. Yeah. Yeah. Joe came to music, but music wasn't necessarily his spark. Yeah. That wasn't the thing that got him there. It might have been. And I think there is a hint to this when uh, um, this is your, for those of you who are writing down your Pixar theory notes, when um, 22 first tastes pizza and we see immediately an emotional spectrum come into existence. Now, to me, that's her spark. That is the moment that her spark was pizza. Which really means that, gee, man, if we could just let kids eat pizza, maybe it wouldn't be so hard to help them find sparks. Um, but that's where you see, because you see her, you see her separate off into like, into the emotional spectrum. You see red and yellow at mm. the far ends, you know, and I do think that that is what that is meant to be, is that's when she gets her spark. Um, her spark was pizza. Unfortunately, she's going to China, so. <sighs> Did they say she was going to China? Well, that, that's the that that. So if you watch it at the end, she's clearly the, the Earth. China. Yeah, she's headed towards Asia okay. as she's jumping through the hole. So she could go to Japan. They have pizza in Japan. Um, they have weird pizza in Japan, but you know that's Japan. They 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 like their they like their interesting food combinations. That's the that's the one thing I wanted to see at the end is her being born. Mm. To whoever, wherever, but I just wanted to see her being born. No, and I see that, and I understand that. I think what they wanted was they wanted to make sure that it was as open ended as possible. Yeah, she could have been anybody. because here is the thing. I mean, the second I saw her going to to Asia, it's like, oh man, I hope she's not born as an untouchable in in uh, Bombay. You know, <laughs> I'm sorry, Mumbai. Um, you know, I, I I hope that she doesn't. You know, oh great, she was born in North Korea. That's that's the story that we're telling now. Um, then it gets to be a much sadder Pixar film. But of course, millions of people every day are well, not well, I don't know how many many people are born in North Korea every day, but a lot of them, and I'm sure a lot of a lot of Sparks did not did not think that was where they were winding up. But then again, it's not like being born in America is uh, that great shakes either. If you don't get born in the right family, which is the thing. It's like it's all family, you know. That's that's the that's the. 
honestly, the, you gotta, you gotta wonder, you, you kind of feel like, um, the, the, the youth seminar or the great before kind of is soft selling life, which, you know, and I think that's a problem for a cynical soul like, uh, 22, because, you know, she, she knows they're soft selling it. They, she knows that, yeah, I might be able to eat pizza if I become born. But even that, quite frankly, I, I may not want to, I may not be able to live in a world that has pizza. Cause they may not have pizza in North Korea. It may be a thing that, you know, or this, no one's going to eat it because, you know, that's not what we eat in this part of the world. You know, could be stuck eating freaking um, fish sauce and, and rice, you know, which is good. Don't get me wrong. I like it. It's delicious, but it's not, it's not pizza. Uh, <laughs> it's not New York pizza. Uh, yeah. So I did, I did do a rewatch of Soul today. Because I did want to see, you know, what what I missed. And there wasn't much I missed. I mean, here's what I will say. Soul is a movie written for kids. Oh, yeah. So everything is pretty much set up for you. Patty Jenkins, she she told a story of a much... She told a, she told a much more complex story about human relationships um, that you got to pick up on the clues to see. Uh... In, in soul, but what, like I said, what they do have in common is they do have this idea of someone taking over another person's body. And similarly, what I will say about Wonder Woman is that I feel that they're following quantum leap rules. Which means that, yes, when Steve looks in the mirror, he sees the aura of the body around him. But that actually is him. I thought I thought it was he was actually in the body and everyone saw that body except Diana because you know she's in love with him or whatever. No, no, no. But see, but that that I think is the difference. You see, hmm. so there's two theories on this. My theory is is that he actually is, that actually is him. That he is this guy. He is reincarnated. I, I that is my headcanon. They don't. They give you hints at it. They even call out reincarnation as a method of gaining knowledge. Because the, um, the the guru they meet, mm-hmm. um, you know, he actually says, well, most of my knowledge comes from past lives. Which, again, when we get into soul, we again see this idea of this full life being led outside of that existence. When we go into that astral plane. I mean, he, I mean Steve mentioned something, you know, when they're walking about he... He can't. He can't remember the details, but he remembered being somewhere else. So I just took that as he was dead and in the afterlife, and he got yanked out of heaven. See, or whatever. but the thing is, that's an assumption. Yeah, true. See, that's see that, and that's the assumption that you're left with, and and it could be like that poor cat um, who wound up in you know when Joe jumps into the cat's body, the cat gets pushed out. Um which is kind of weird. So it's like, is that cat dead now? Except we do see at the end the cat does come back. Yes. Because, you know, that's why they got nine lives. Ah! For me, I thought they were trying to say that cats have no souls. But no, the cat's soul was there. Was going to the great beyond and then, you know, just wandered back because it's a cat. Um, oh, cats. Um, but as as it is, the idea of who you are being your soul or who you are being your body, is a question that that kind of comes into this. Now, in my own headcanon, it's the same soul. It's, it's that soul in that body uh, in Wonder Woman, and it is, but it, it, in the same way that it's a, it's a, it's it's twenty two in Joe's body, um, and we can accept that in a sense. We can accept the idea of whatever whatever twenty two is doing in Joe's body it is twenty two doing it, not Joe. Oh yeah. Though Joe does have to live with whatever consequences there are. Though at the same time, you know, what consequences there are are immense. Um, um, I really liked Soul as a film. I think that as a film, it, it, it brings something to the forefront that I don't think a lot of people think about. I, 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 which is this idea of, you know... 
what it means to be alive and what it means to be within a life that you've created, especially when that life isn't what you necessarily want, you know? And let's face it, none of us have the life we want. Sadly, even people that have a life you might envy probably want something else. You have people like um, like Maxwell Lord who simply want more, you know? Okay. Like our former president. I know he's still technically the president, but he was hoping. Um, <laughs> like, no matter what they're given, they want more. They want something because they're trying to fill a hole that can never be filled, and that leads you to become a lost soul. And that is the idea. And, of course, when 22, having been briefly alive, now becoming a lost soul, because all of the weight, because she has now experienced an emotional spectrum. And that's, that for, for those of you taking notes for the Pixar theory, she's experienced an emotional spectrum. She now is a full being. That's when you get to go be born, is once you become a full being. being. But because she has experienced a full emotional spectrum, now she can be weighted down by her thoughts of failure and, and sorrow and rejection from people. Um, you know, which is sad. Christina Flay is such a sweet girl. And uh, at least I, I assume I've only seen her in movies. But, you know, <laughs> you know, she was good because, like, for most of that movie, I didn't read. I'm like, I know that voice is familiar, but I don't recognize who that is. And, yeah, and then I found it was Tina Fey. Like, oh, yeah. Oh, man. I, I, I didn't recognize anyone's voice in this, honestly. They were all. And I don't, I don't even know who John Ratzenberger was. Is he still alive? He's not dead, so. is he? No, I think so. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So he's got to be in there somewhere, but I think I missed him. But I will say, I love Felicia Rashad. Yes. Yes. That's, you know, we may not be able to talk about her, form, uh, her, her TV husband, but America still has a mom and her name is Felicia Rashad. It's great. Um, yeah. Uh, we should just call that the um, Felicia Rashad show now, and then we can. We can watch it and enjoy it again. Uh, <laughs> but, um, no, uh, and I do think that that's an important thing because it is, there is a very strong aspect of this. What it really is about is, as was, which I think is the whole as, important aspect of the Lost Souls is that Joe himself is a Lost Soul. Mm hmm. That he has become so mani monomaniacally obsessed with this dream that he can't he he can't be really at peace. Um, because of course, once he achieves his dream, even you know, that's when he realizes that oh, I did my dream, you know said he could die a happy man once he played on stage with her. And then all of a sudden, he's like, oh, nothing really changed. That was just one more thing in my life. This is weird. I mean, I was looking up the cast. I was wanting to see who John uh, Ratzenberger was. It, he's mm -hmm. not credited. It just says voice uncredited. Oh, okay. So he's in there somewhere. Unless he, maybe he did like maybe some, just like some background, you know, like some background. Yeah, he, he, was, he was probably one of the... Um, Maybe he was the voice of the cat. I don't know. Or some uh, neighborhood people, something, yeah. Maybe he was the sociopath uh, soul. Um, which I loved. The, I loved how flippant the the Jerry's were about the souls. It's like, maybe we shouldn't put so many in the self-absorbed pavilion. And <laughs> I'm a narcissistic sociopath with delusions of grandeur. <laughs> like, oh, he sounds like he's going to be a handful. Also, I love the fact that, you know, all the Jerry's are, uh, I'm guessing New Zealanders, maybe they're Australians, I don't know. I can't tell the difference between an Australian accent and a New Zealand accent and a Tasmanian accent. I'm sorry, Ray. Ah! We can't all know the difference. Ah! 
I'm sure Ray could how oh, well, you think that's a New Zealand accent? Those were clearly Tasmanians. What the How heck? dare you, sir? How dare you insult me? Um, oh, but um yeah, it's it's uh it's it's an interesting film. I highly recommend people watch it. But the idea that Joe is a lost soul and probably was always a lost soul until he gets his eyes opened by seeing someone experience life for the first time and seeing that life is so much more than your monomaniacal obsession. And that is really what it is about. And again, what Wonder Woman is about. It's more than your monomaniacal obsession. It is more than your need to achieve a thing or to believe or to think something is your goal. The purpose of life is to live. That's the meaning of life. Get through it. Enjoy it. Have a slice of pizza. Walk. Watch the sky. You know? Be there for a friend. Yeah, you can do that, too. Um, I mean, like, 20, it, like 22 was there for Joe, and, you know, or Joe yeah, was there yeah, for yeah. 22. And Joe was there for, for, for 22 at the end. And Joe had to face the pain he caused. Mm-hmm. And I do like, you know, when you get the idea of all of these historically great people. Sad we didn't get a Jack Kirby cameo, but that that would have been nice, because you see that his name's on the wall. Um, although it's also interesting that apparently that the mentors only get like 22 minutes I know. To, to inspire you. It's like, really? That was supposed to be it? Yeah, <laughs> if you, you can't do it. But then again, I guess time is an interesting abstraction for Jerry's, you know? It's like they're, they're, you know, and oh, just to talk about the animation. The idea that the Jerry's are two dimensional beings because that's what we can perceive them as. Yeah. You know, they're like Paper Mario. It's like they can turn sideways, but they're still two dimensional. I, I love that. And just the idea of, of, um, you know, these beings that are, not within our realm, but that are somehow charged with taking care of us. Really makes you feel important, you know? Mm-hmm. You know, also interestingly enough, apparently there are not aliens in the uh, Pixar universe because they're all going to Earth. Oh, yeah. I mean, arguably they could have had planets opening anywhere. She could have been being born on Mars, you know? Or, you know, Alpha Centauri 7, you know, or whatever that planet would be called. So apparently. One planet in the Pixar universe with life, which fits into the Wally theory, because clearly, if there were a, mother, a bunch of other aliens, the action would have would have ran into them, because they clearly had FTL travel; they could go anywhere. That there is just this little ship of humans tells you that, yeah, that's all there is, kids. <laughs> it's a bunch of big nothingness. But the things that are are something really are kind of special. And that's the moral of soul and probably the moral of Wonder Woman as well. There are gods and there are humans, although we're going to talk about this tomorrow when we get to the Wonder Woman review. Um, I think Patty Jenkins really set up something interesting if you want to do the, do the legwork for it where there is theories and ideas and this magical universe that Patty Jenkins has created. And it's not just her who's creating it, because it 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 it, it kind of leapfrogs from Wonder Woman and Shazam and this idea of not being the science universe but the magic universe mm-hmm. to differentiate it, which is, gee, I wonder who suggested that in the past. Um <laughs> Here in in the DC uh, extended universe, and you know, like I said, I actually, upon further watching it, I liked the Wonder Woman. Like watching it more than once and looking looking for the answers to the questions I had. That's what I will say. If you have questions, if you felt like, oh, I didn't quite understand why they did that, watch it again. They may answer that question. You go, oh, that's why that's that way. That's why she goes to Trevor Ranch. That's why Trevor Ranch is a black and white picture and it is a color picture. And that's why they go back and show that Trevor Ranch picture more than once to show that. And, to, and you know, like I said, I think she, I think, I think she, Patty got into like, well, what would it be to be an immortal being and then live among mortals? 
because what does it mean for an Amazon to fall in love? Because I'm sure Amazon's had love, but then Mm -hmm. it's love for a thousand years. And to fall in love and have that love taken away, you know, you can say, why are you sitting around on your butt for 20 years obsessed about this woman or 40 years or 60 years at this point? It's like, well, you know, first off, 60 years is a blink of an eye for her. And, you know, Amazon's usually just fall in love once. But we'll get my full review and everybody else's opinions about why they are wrong uh, tomorrow on Capes and Lunatics, super spectacular, first of the new year, um, Wonder Woman special. That is a Capes and Lunatics special, correct? Uh, it, yeah, it's an episode. Yeah, uh, episode 190. So, yes, check that out. So look for it, kids. You'll enjoy it. Okay, you want to talk comics, Phil? Yes, I even read um, Werewolf by Night and uh, Shang-Chi. Oh, cool, cool, because I read those, too. I also read Avengers, and I read um, the Spider-Man book. Uh, yeah, that's that's totally the, the guy I say it is, man. That's, although I think maybe Harry thinks, uh, like I said, I think, I get the, the, when, when, so let's talk about that book first. Let's get that out of the way. All right, Amazing Spider-Man 55, which I think it's just for the cover. These are already going online for, like, 25 bucks or something. Okay. They do know they sell them at the comic book stores for like five bucks, right? I know. Even, I know. Well, three ninety nine. dollars I know. Like I know yeah. yeah. You know, plus tax, and you want to give a nice tip. That's you know. what I said. Always tip your comic book store guy. I'm like, nothing happened inside. You know, it's like, is it just because it's a black cover? Because, you know, those ones, you know, you can t- tell more of the wear and tear on the spine or something. I don't know. I, what I'm going to say is probably it's that this is where nerds in the know really realized that it was going to be that guy from uh, the evil that men do. Because uh, <laughs> Norman comes and is like, you know, it's stop with the lies. And by the way, the, the, the use of the word Europe in this, it's a little heavy handed. <laughs> I know um I know uh, Brian Cronin did his great article about going to Europe meaning being dead in the Marvel universe or, or at least the Spider-Man section of it. Um uh, read that article. It's it, it's uh over there at CBR under the comic should be good um uh band banner. Nobody's out uh, Brian. Yes. Um, I, I know sometimes you get mad because he he he's stealing from us, but here we're stealing from him, or at least Marvel's stealing from him. But um, you know, then we went to Europe, and then they came back. How many times does Harry Osborne say Europe in this? I don't know. I just, I even think he references it to Gwen Stacy once when she's dead. I'm just this whole storyline. Every issue, it's like confess what you did. I don't remember what I did. What do you want me to confess to? Confess. Yeah, and and of course, see that's the thing. And like when Mary Jane comes in at the end, and she's like, you know, he can't tell you what he doesn't know. It almost sounds to imply as people say, "Oh, maybe Mary Jane knows they sold their marriage to the devil." Um, well, yeah, I mean, she whispered to Mephisto or whoever she thought was Mephisto. Is that was that her thing? Saying, "Yeah, he doesn't remember. He doesn't remember." Oh my gosh! What if he never made a deal with Mephisto? Yeah, what if it was Mary Jane? That's what I said. Yeah. No, no, no. no. What I'm saying is, what if Mephisto really has nothing to do with? Oh it? yeah, yeah, yeah. What if? What if? No, no, no. Hear me out. You know, you know my crazy fan theory here, and I'm blinking on his name, Clum, Clum, um, yeah. Francis Clum. That's his name, Francis Clum. I could be wrong, but what if he actually was already doing the Mysterio bet, presented him so because he really realized, oh, Emmy's gonna be just fine. She's, you know, <laughs> she's, 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 she's. she's got a weak heart, but she's always had a weak heart. She's been in the hospital ten times. Well, she was shot too, but yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, but you know, they stabilize her. This is the, this is, this is the freaking Marvel Universe. You know, you can have freaking shrapnel in your heart for 20 years, and it's not gonna kill you. You're gonna tell me a blazing bullet kills Aunt May? No, the guy, the guy, he's pulling us, and so he creates his little Mephisto story, because he knows... Because he's done the research, he knows people know who Mephisto is. They, he knows that, and he like breaks up their marriage, and then actually 
somehow tricks Peter into doing the whole thing where he goes to Dr. Strange. I need you to make everyone forget who I was. This guy is playing eighth dimensional chess. That's what I'm saying. There was never a deal with Mephisto, which would be brilliant. If Marvel says, actually, no, Peter never made a deal with Mephisto. That's all. That's all been Mysterio manipulation the whole time. Well, I would love that. What, what if there was either either way? I could see a deal with or without Mephisto. But I mean, they're building up Kingpin here a lot. What if Kingpin's <laughs> getting into like the supernatural, like the dark arts and whatever? Well, to be fair, when the Dark Force was engulfing New York City, he certainly had his taste of it. You know, and for what it's worth, this man has been working this beat for a long time. And during, what was that, Shadowland? I mean, when he he was basically running the hand for a while, I mean, that's all mystical and... Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, you know, that's the, that's the thing about a, a magical universe in which everyone lives. At a certain point, you're going to have to say, you know, probably lots of people know that magic is a real thing. And people aren't going to be like, oh, magic, that, there's no such thing as magic. Ha, ha, ha. It's like, no, everyone knows that magic is real. There's a guy named Dr. Strange. He was, there was a guy named Dr. Druid in the Avengers, you know, <laughs> who was a government employee, had an ID card and everything. Yeah, there is a guy named Dr. Doom. Everyone knows Dr. Doom. But, um, you know, but that's the thing. It's like, at a certain point, it's like you can't keep this stuff a secret. Oh, yeah. So, really, you know, you know, they're cloning people over at Empire State University. We've got f- freaking Masters of the Mix- Mystic Arts running left and right. It's It gets crazy sometimes. And uh, so, it would not surprise me that Fisk knows. But at the same time, it also wouldn't surprise me if Clum reaches out to Fisk to set up, says, here's what we're going to do. I really hate Spider-Man. And again, the personalness of it. That, that's the thing. And also in that idea of um, Peter not knowing what he has to apologize for. Mm-hmm. Part of me feels like it's not that oh, you brought him back from the dead, or yada, yada, yada. I get the feeling it. this is, again, just to feed into my fan theory, because I have a fan theory, and I'm going to keep on pushing it until I'm proven wrong, um, is that he's like, Clum wants him to apologize for killing his brother. Mm. And it's like, but because he, he doesn't even understand, like, why? what did I do to you, Harry? But even Harry's, like, been driven mad by this, because this guy's been freaking... Mysterioing Harry, and that's and see that's the smart thing. He went and drove Harry mad first. Mm-hmm. You know, he figured out you know that that and that cause that's what Mysterio would do. Mysterio would before he attacks frontally, he's going to attack from the side. He's going to figure out okay, how can I set up this shot? How can I create this story? How can I tell this tale? And that's what he did, and that's what we have, and it's pretty awesome. Have a party popper, Tristan. <laughs> okay. No, wait, wait. No, no, here. Hold it. Hold it like this and this. And point it away from you. Okay, ready? And say Happy New Year before you do it. Happy New Year! You gotta, you gotta pull the string hard. Happy Don't point it at your face when you pull it hard. <laughs> there you go. Yay! Yay. Wow. All right. Yes, it is made with gunpowder. That's why you smell sulfur, sulfur right now. It's a very small amount. It's like a finger snap amount. Anyway. All right. Um, hold on. Can you Eric, Can you see that? Yeah. They said Spider-Man's getting a new suit in uh, issue 61 because something, oh. something about, uh, yeah, going to fight Kingpin. So, yeah. So, they're building Fisk up to be something major in this, you know. Yeah. Whatever his part. Well, he's... That's a weird suit. I don't know if I like Spider-Man in gray. I don't, yeah, I don't know if it's going to be like... I mean, they did a spider armor in the 90s. It lasted one issue. So I don't know if it's going to be one of those things where it's going to last for one fight. Yeah. I mean, yeah. To, to be fair, you don't mess too much with the classics. And mm-hmm. yes, you can pop one more. Just keep it away from your face. It, it, it's going la- to last one fight, you know, so they can sell yes. variant covers and some toys. You know? yeah. yeah, of course. Um, but yeah, it is, it is, it is, 
like I said, I'm in my own fan theory. I mean, maybe it's, oh, no, it was Mephisto the whole time. Yeah. I don't see how Mephisto profits from this. That's my thing. Yeah. It's like, aside from maybe someone messing up Peter, that's cool. Um, you know? And, and that is cool. Don't get me wrong. I can see how that's an advantage to Mephisto. But I also think that, here's what I'm going to say. It's like, I actually think that there's a, an advantage to Marvel to make one more day not be a real thing. Well, yeah, I think, I, well, to, well, the big things, I think, one, it was sloppy storytelling, but two, it's like, you, you really want, like, your flagship character, the one most recognized character in your company, to, oh, yeah, a couple years ago, yeah, he sold his soul to the devil, or he sold his marriage to the devil, yeah, yeah. Yeah, or, and that's the thing, you know, when, when Mephisto actually did make a deal with Miles, he did not actually ask for anything from Miles. Hmm. When he when he goes because he reverses time so that Ms. Marvel doesn't die yeah. because the teen heroes are teen heroes and not very good at it and are sh- punching way outside their weight class. <laughs> uh, to be fair, you know, I mean that's the thing. It's like that, you know, for all the for all the nonsense with Outlawed and Cradle, you know, they are punching outside their weight class. They are dealing with stuff that is not what they need to be dealing with. And, you know, when they're going around the world to solve problems, you know, mistakes will happen. And you can say, well, is it better to have a superhero team on site to avoid mistakes happening? Or maybe since you have a super fast Quinjet, maybe it would be better if you just like sent paramedics. You know, (laughs) if there was like, I know there's actually like a paramedic character in the new Marvel or the, a Marvel video game that came out a while ago. There was like a support class character. It's like maybe that's a better use for all this Quinjet technology rather than sending, you know, a bunch of costumed teenagers to punch uh punch an earthquake. Maybe we should just send the aid. Or uh, may ma- oh if it isn't Mephisto. Miles Morales, Mephisto asked nothing of him. Mm-hmm. Who was an old friend? I mean, years and years friends with the six one six older Miles Morales, Wilson Fisk. There you go. Maybe because it's and, a younger version of his old friend. If his Fisk is behind this, I don't know. well, I don't know. But what I what I will say about because here's what I'll say, and that's sort of what you get when you get the deal that Mephisto makes with Peter about blotting out his marriage. But really, it's just about asking for help from a person who is going to, who you know is there to do evil. Uh, because essentially what Mephisto says to Miles when Miles makes his one more day is he says, you know, I, I can reverse time. All, all I ask is you don't tell anyone. You know, you get to carry this, and that's just a burden you get to carry. See, it was kind of a twist when he did it with Peter and Mary Jane. He was kind of like, yeah, you, you consciously, you won't remember making the deal. He's like, but your soul is going to be screaming for eternity over, you know, giving up this true love and, you know. Yeah, and, and that is, see, because that is the kind of thing I can see Mephisto doing. Yeah. You know, and that's the thing. It's like, it's not selling your soul. It, your soul goes where it's going in its own time. Yeah. Mephisto doesn't need your soul right now. But what he does need is he needs to get your soul to a place where it's happy to, where he can welcome you in. I forget, did he ask Otto anything for changing him back? Oh, no. What he asked of Otto was simply that, um, because he basically said, I'll put you back in your body just as you were. Yes. Because Otto wanted to say he would still be the hero. Even without it, and the fact of the matter is, he still was the hero. Oh yeah, because he, well, he, well, but I didn't Mephisto even say, yeah, you were, you always said you were the way you were because of like you know brain damage or something from the accident. And he's like, no, I'll put you back healthy. So we'll see how heroic you are. And then he was heroic. That's that's the thing, and that's what that is what um what um um. Marconi said, it's like, no, you saved it. So, no, I just didn't want the difficulties of it. But the same, that was the thing is that, you know, Otto was always a decent enough person in his own way. He just has doom like hubris. Except, unlike Doom, he actually went to college. <laughs> and then, Doom, went, Doom went to college. Oh, I was thinking about this the other day. You, you always say Doom's like a college dropout. No, he's like that yeah. guy who can't decide what he wants to be, so he changes his major every semester. 
Oh, well, yeah, but Science, he still didn't graduate mysticism. college. That's all I'm saying. Science. He didn't graduate. He doesn't no. have doctorate. Because he couldn't decide what he wanted to be. Science, mysticism, robotics. Oh, I can't. Uh, you know, and granted, he's a polymath. And no, no mad respect for a polymath. But, you know, as Tony Stark once said, you know, I'm technically a doctor, too. But I don't <laughs> call myself Dr. Iron Man. You know, you guys just get off on calling yourselves doctors, you know. <laughs> But anyway, but yeah, I really liked it. And speaking of Doctor Doom, let's talk Avengers Ooh. number forty. And this is this is one of those ones where they do like some, they do it like placed out over time. Yeah, and because uh, they because they jump into the middle, know, middle of a Captain America yeah, Doctor Doom fight. Yeah, jump into the middle of the Captain America, and basically we're doing <laughs> basically. What if we took, like, several characters and did a little quick secret wars with them? Because um, <laughs> everyone has to fight, you know, and then Doom, you know, is like, oh, I see that Phoenix just likes Captain America, so he's just going to keep on rising and rising. So I will not play your game. I forfeit because I'm, you know, it's like, no, you're going to lose. Because you don't have the spirit to keep on rising, Dr. Doom. Yes, you can eat a cone. Cause I can't. Yeah. Uh, yeah, not even Secret Wars. What was that? What was that one? It was like a mini. It was like contest of champions or something. Yeah, oh, they, they do. It's look. I know they've done this a few times. So I don't know if you know this, but comic book nerds like to ask who would win in a fight a lot. <laughs> I know, shocking. Shocking, but that is a theme that goes through a lot of uh, comic book storylines, and in this case, yes, um, you know we're going to get this little fight between all these different people. Who will be the Phoenix host? Although, what I like about it is the fact that Captain America doesn't want to be the Phoenix. Yeah, he's like, I do not want to do that. But also, arguably, maybe he is the person who can fix the Phoenix. Although it strikes me, you know who actually should be the Phoenix? Hmm. Galactus. Oh. Well, no, but the idea is, is that maybe if the Phoenix and Galactus would just kiss already, they could both become that one perfect being. Yeah, there's so much in common. They both destroy planets. Well, but, you know, that's the idea. Well, see, that's the thing. When you had the life giver, um, uh, Galactus, that's what Galactus was supposed to be, according to their theory. So what if the idea is that Galactus gets awoken early, but that extra life energy has been split off from him, and that's what becomes the Phoenix? So what if the actual story is that Galactus and the Phoenix need to kiss already? Just kiss! And then it's like, no, now we can both be death and life. Sometimes we'll bring laughs, sometimes we'll bring death. Sometimes we'll bring death, then life, right after it, just to be crazy. Because we're two crazy uh, natural-born killers roaming the universe. I'm surprised you didn't call out your favorite uh, character on this last page to be the Phoenix, uh, Howard. Howard the Duck. Wait, Howard the Duck is in that thing? Last page, man. He's standing there right next to Hyperion. Dear Lord, I missed that. Okay. So she just, so Phoenix just grabbed a bunch of people. Oh, Zabu, Zabu's there. Oh, look. Uh, yeah, Shauna's there. Zabu, uh, Moon Girl, and Double Dinosaur. Oh, look, six one six Nighthawk. Yeah, remember him, kids. <laughs> He's not the cool Nighthawk though. Jane, that would be. Yeah, Jane Foster's up there. Jane Foster's up there. Wait, why does She Hulk look normal? Is that she? Is that supposed to be She Hulk? I think it's it's Jennifer Walters. Yeah, for some reason she's yeah. That's the Phoenix. Just you know, crazy that the orb is there. <laughs> you know, the guy who has like, I, uh, oh, I'm insane now. Yeah, we got Shang Chi, Black Knight, Man Things there. That's nice. Echo, Echo. Yeah, you know, there's there's some interesting characters. Who's, oh, that that's Jean Foster Valkyrie. Okay, yeah, yeah. Shine of the She Devil. Yeah, it looks like Luke. Is that Luke Cage standing next to the Nighthawk? Yeah, Luke Cage. Man, I didn't even. I, I you know, I should have paid more attention to this. I, because I, I, you know, the orb draws your eye. You know, the, is that is that Red Wolf standing next to the orb? No, I think that's American Eagle. Okay. No, no, we do get to Red Wolf because Red Wolf is in Werewolf by Night. That's right. 
this. Red Wolf doesn't wear gloves, generally speaking. Okay. He's not a superhero. He's a man out of time. He's yeah. He is Conan the Barbarian. I'm sorry. It's a really great way that they figured. Hey, what if we did Conan the Barbarian in modern times? Since we don't have Conan, and then they bought Conan. I was like, oh, okay. Well, maybe we can find something to do with this guy because he is awesome. Um, and he calls out the fact that I love the fact that Red Wolf not only is it is he outside of time, he also understands. You know. Yeah, there was another dimension, and, you know, it's like, this is where I was, here's where I am. I'm not going to dwell on the deeper cosmological aspects of that, because apparently, you know, I grew up in a world where there were spirits and gods and things like that, and I'm still in a world with spirits and gods and things like that. You know, I could sit here and complain about it, or I can move forward. And he sings the song, which is not a very good song, because they actually give you the lyrics to it later. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> with the song of the wolf, uh, oh, where yeah. they basically give what the origin of this particular red wolf werewolf curse. We call out the fact that red wolf is connected to all the other werewolves or all the other red wolves that have existed. And we actually get like glimpses of them there, you know. Um, and you know, it's it's neat. I like what they're setting up here. And this idea that, you know, they knew there was this lineageal werewolf here. Now, just out of curiosity, is um, um, Russell, Jack, is Jack Russell, did he get bitten or was he just, he just became I, a lineageal werewolf? I'm, I, I'm not the, the most read up on him, but I believe, I thought it was a family curse. Yeah, which again goes to the not for nothing. That is, it's entirely possible they could be cousins, you know. So finding someone with the familial curse of werewolfism um, is not outside of uh, the realm of reality. And apparently, you know, this clockwork lady. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if she's a villain that has existed before this over at the Life Pharmaceuticals. Yeah, not sure. You know, the fact that life, farm, farm, that life, the life corporation or the life foundation or whatever it is and life for, pharmaceuticals exists in the Marvel universe and one has to deal with symbiotes and one does not. And now we're talking about our children. I don't know. I think we're going to get a venom tie into this eventually. Uh, probably related to the King of Black. I, I think that's supposed to be that they've captured. Um, our hero, uh, and put him in the stasis chamber, just like Luke Skywalker, the start of Return of the Jedi, or the start of uh, Empire Strikes Back, because you know it's what you do. Oh, good lord! I'm I'm reading the Wikipedia. Yeah, I mean they're they're saying back to like the late 1700s, there was like reports of uh, like canthropy in the Russell family. But what did it say that it's either Jack Russell's father or grandfather? Guess who he guess who he was pounding around with for the for a while? Who the High Evolutionary? There you go, good old High Evolutionary. Uh, yeah, the water rose. Come right back down. to that High Evolutionary man, Spider Woman, hey. Werewolf by Night. Hey, speaking about uh, obscure callbacks, did you read Chang Chi? Yes, I did. Did you catch the name of the evil sorcerer who the British are using to conquer China during the Boxer Rebellion? Oh, I forget. I read these real quick. What, what was uh Baron Harkness? Oh, yes, yes, I did catch Harkness. Yes, yes. Which is weird because I would. Well, I guess yeah. Is it? Because we, we've seen Hot Agatha, because Hot Agatha is back, um, now in spirit form. Um, you know, that's the great thing, is you die, and you get to come back as the, you get to come back as Hayden Christ- Christensen, or um, uh, Ewan McGregor. You don't have to come back as as the old guy uh, nowadays, but... Um, hey, it takes a couple deaths. I've been, I was rereading uh, on Marvel Unlimited, those old Vision and Scarlet Witch, uh, miniseries and yeah agatha's died a couple times <laughs> yeah yeah but you know when she comes back to that physical form yeah 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 but w- what we've gotten now is we've gotten agatha harkness in the 40s in the 30s when she was young hot agatha harkness and uh which really she shouldn't have aged that much in 20 years unless that's you know the magic taking a price of that hey all magic has a price remember 
<laughs> that is true. That is true. Um, <laughs> but yeah, right now, I, I love the scene with um, Shang Chi's uncle. Oh yes, uh, <laughs> with the food. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's the food, and also just the idea that you know he is just he he, uh, he reminds me of uh, what's his name, uh, Kui Kui from um, Kung Fu Panda. <laughs> It's like, oh, yeah, yeah, I know, I know what you want. I know what you want the universe to be, but that's not what it is. Because um, he wants to heal his car, and he wants to be rid of all of this craziness. He wants to live a normal life. It's like, mm, that's not the world you live in, son. <laughs> you know, and that's the thing. It's like, that's a, even if you lived a normal life in the Marvel Universe, you're living in a universe with gods and monsters and magicians and things like that. Oh yeah. So it's not like you were going to not be a part of this world, you know. That's just the world, you know. It's like I want to live in a world without, you know, billionaires. It's like nope, that's the world we live in. That's our superpower. Um, we had a nice, um, nice bit of the origin of um, uh, what do they call him now? A uh, Zhengju. Yeah, because it's Zheng Zhengju and Zheng Yi. Um, and Zheng Yu wants to give his life force to his brother, Yang Zi, uh, who is the uncle. For those of you who don't remember, Zheng Yu sometimes goes by the pseudonym Fu Manchu until we lost the rights to that character. Say, well, until, uh, well, copyrights permitting. <laughs> yes, copyright permitting. <clears throat> Um, but it is this idea of the two brothers balancing each other and um, Zheng Yu Zheng Zhu realizing that without his brother to keep him in check, he would probably turn evil. Guess what happened? Um, <laughs> yeah, we also get the idea that um, the dragon that uh, Brother uh, Saber is fighting gives him a vision of the future. When Master Hand, Saint Cheng Chi, does ascend and become the leader, and then he becomes essentially, you know, another person like uh, Zheng Zhu out to conquer the world, becomes a supervillain. Um, and we do see when he comes back, now he's got this little, little starlight on his head. Oh, wait, oh, they all have starlights on their head. I guess that's supposed to be a flashlight? I don't know. I don't know, man. It looks the way they drew it. It looks like it's like, oh, now I because I don't think he had it in like the earlier scenes. Yeah, see, he doesn't like have a flashlight on his head in the earlier scenes. It's just in the later scenes, but then they all have flashlights on their heads. So I don't know what that's about. The artist is trying to tell us something. I don't know what, but yeah, I like Shang Chi, and apparently the next issue is the last issue. But then there's the new Legends of uh, Shang-Chi coming out. So there will be another Shang-Chi book coming out soon. Um, yeah, a lot of these books now, they, uh, they'll do like, you know, five or so. And then they'll, yeah, if it's, I guess if it's popular enough, they just do another run of it or whatever. Yeah, I got three books I did not get the chance to read yet, which include Jenny, Jenny Hicks, uh, Vampire the Masquerade number five, um, because I keep missing every other issue of this book because I forgot to put it on my pull list. It's there now. And this one, which looks cool. Homesick Pilots huh. from Image. And I haven't read that yet, but I will read that along with Vampire the Masquerade number five and uh, Jenny, Jenny Hicks number one from Wonder Comics. They're on my, I'm going to read these, but I did not get the chance to yet. But uh, and I liked them in the store. They got me excited in the store. And so. remember, I'd rec I recommend to you Iron Man and Doctor Doom, King and Black. Iron yes. These two face a, a uh, venomized Santa. Then I'm sorry, I know I, I ran out of time before I could read that one too. It's uh yeah, I mean Hey, we just did Christmas episodes. I know. But yeah. this, oh it's weird. curses it's, world again. It's weird. This one just came out this week, so they put it out a couple days after Christmas. Unless it was Well, late. you know, COVID delays. I was gonna say unless it was running late, yeah. Yeah, because King and Black ran late. So no, it's true. like yeah, that's easy. Like King and Black was this was supposed to be a great Christmas issue, probably would have dropped right in December. When King and Black uh, first came out, but otherwise it would have been like, oh, this is going to give out too much if we don't drop King and Black first. We're not dropping King and Black until the end of December, so. I mean, it was only off by a week. I mean, if they had dropped this on the 23rd, that would have been the best, you know, two days yeah. before Christmas. That would have been the greatest. It would have worked, but, you know, I 
I'm not in charge of logistics at Marvel Comics, Phil. I know. So, you know. Oh, and uh, if any, anyone who enjoyed uh, 90s Ghost Rider, Ghost Rider Return of Vengeance, one shot came out this week, uh, pick that up. 90s Ghost Rider, so we're talking Danny Ketch. Um, well, actually, it's actually the character Vengeance, uh, Michael Badalino. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. And, and, writ- and written by Howard Mackey, who wrote the Ghost Ghost Rider book in the 90s. So, Yeah. And, you know, for what it's worth, that, that idea of Vengeance as an esoteric concept, which, by the way, I'm still saying the big reveal in the current Fantastic Four arc is going to be that be the, the mourner is not an esoteric concept. Mm. She is just an elder of the universe. She wants everyone to think she's an esoteric concept. She's putting on airs. But this one, literally, vengeance is trying to, well, trying to escape yeah. hell. Well, good. Well, you know, I don't know. I think hell needs vengeance. That's the whole point of hell is to be is vengeful, you know. Yep. Oh, yeah. And there's a big thing with the Lilith from the 90s. I, I always giggle when I read a Ghost Rider and they keep mentioning Lilith, Lilith, like Mother of Demons. It's like, oh. Yes, I know. Everyone, it's Lilith, you picked the name. That's what I'm <laughs> saying. That's your fake name. You could have been Susan Hellfire, but no, you decided to be Lilith Hellfire. And so. You pick the name, you gotta live with it. I think she Just, likes it. And you know, to be fair, you know, you know, uh, Tristan feels your pain by with his name Toxin Gamer. Love you too. Hey, we've already we've already established we're allowed to talk your name in the time. Oh, and you, uh, I don't know. He goes back and forth on what he wants. To that be middle-aged about. man, Toxin Gamer, who lives in your apartment with you and your family. Yes, <laughs> Toxin Gamer thirteen. Which I know it's okay, buddy. Yeah, I know you don't like the name. I'm sure Lilith is regretting the name sometimes, too. I just fell out uh, of my chair this week when I was on social media, and, like, your oldest uh, is in high school already? Yeah, he's a freshman. Wow, time flies. Yeah, he is He is a freshman, and uh, algebra. <laughs> I know. Fractions. That's the thing. I don't like fractions. We have a base 10 system. We do not need fractions. And then my nephew, just to be contrarian, says, well, actually, fractions are actually more precise. <laughs> no, they're not. Not if you can't do the math. It's not more precise if you can't do the math. If the math is harder, do it as a decimal. Because it needs to be close enough to get that rocket to the moon. I'm not here to talk about your esoteric quandaries. Pure math is the realm of madness. And I stand by that. Madness. Madness. Oh, I'm becoming pure math. Oh. Anyway, Philip, anything else you want to talk about this week? No, I'm good. Um, hey, you know what? In a mere 14 days, we're getting WandaVision. Yes, that's right. And I think we're going to do a special Capes of Lunatics episode on the history of the characters. Oh, that sounds like fun. I love Wanda and Vision. I was going to say, I've been reading reading up, doing my homework, so. I'm sad they don't kiss anymore. What, in the comics? Yeah, they don't kiss anymore. Oh, yeah. I mean, they're not married. They're not even together, are they, in the comics? No, they're not. And he's she's off with Wonder Man. and. <sighs> well, you know, art always imitates the uh, popular media, so maybe they'll get back together once one division drops. Now kiss! Oh, um, <laughs> I do not. I do not claim uh, "now kiss" is my catchphrase, but I love the fact that it exists. <laughs> oh, just playing with my with my action figures and not dolls. Um, all right, Philip. Hey, Philip, did you hear me okay tonight? Ah, uh, kind of, sorta. Yeah, you know, I really think that you know, if people are having trouble hearing the podcast, it may actually be your audio equipment. And if you go over to tweakedaudio.com, you can get yourself some high quality audio headsets at a fraction of the retail cost by simply entering in the coupon code Southgate. Then you can take the coupon code Southgate and use it again over at uh, huntingkiller.com, where you can help Michelle Gray solve a cold case. It's like an escape room delivered to your house. It's pretty awesome. Um, like rice. If you're that interest, you go down into our show notes, click on the Amazon link, go to Amazon through us, costs you nothing, helps us out, because we said, hey, go to Amazon and buy stuff. And they're like, oh, okay, I'll go to Amazon and buy stuff. And now I've bought stuff, which I was going to do anyway, but now it helps out the show, because we reminded you that you have money you need to spend over at Amazon through our show notes. Do that. 
And while you're there, why don't you check out Pod Life, the book, the book written by the Southgate Media Group crew uh, about podcasting. And it's available both in hard copy, if you like that tangible media, and digital, if you're like, no, man, I got no time to hold a piece of paper. That's available to you. And if anyone does all that, Philip, and they'd like to talk to us about that or talk about us about anything, comic book or pop culture related, how can they find you? Uh, can how can I, they find us? I was going to say, if you want to get a hold of any of us, email us capesandlunatics at gmail.com or call the voicemail 614-382-2737. That's 614-38CAPES. I'll forward it to the appropriate party. And find links to all of our stuff at linktree, L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E slash capes and lunatics. And if you're interested in WandaVision we were talking about, check out upcoming episodes of Full Stream Ahead on Capes and Lunatics podcast or Enough Said podcast. Charlie yes, S- Charlie okay. Esser and Moz Manzor. Episode Doing the episode. double duty just to make everybody happy. And to do less work, technically, but that's okay. <laughs> all right, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Uh, if you would like to write to me directly, I've got to do my, I have, I have to do my social medias. Uh, if you'd like to write to me in the old fashioned email, whether our mothers and fathers once did, do so at superconnectivityblog at gmail.com. That's superconnectivityblog, all one word, at gmail.com. And of course, follow me on the Twitter as I live tweet. DuckTales, woohoo, Monday nights at 7 when it is coming back. I think we're getting new episodes maybe on Monday the 4th at Charlie Esser. That's C H A R L I E S S E R. Look for the two E's in the middle. Four. Thank you, Maz, and thank you, Toxin Gamer 13. All right. Um. <laughs> Thank you for connecting with us, ladies and gentlemen. Please super connect with us again. And as always, have a happy new year. It's the visual gag there. Uh, I, I, I heard snaps. Name. I don't know if that like, even shows up, but anyway. Uh, that was fun, Philip, as always. Thank you, sir. A great first uh, episode of Super Connectivity for 2021. Yes, the, the Twilight Zone Marathon is on. They're doing the Midnight Sun episode. That's a good one.